Hello, my name is Robert Dean Steele, and this is your Cornerstone Community Church Service for September the 15th, 2024. Father, thank you today for this wonderful opportunity to sing, to also give your word, and Lord, spend time together. Now we ask your blessing upon this time in Jesus' name, amen. Well, again, I want to invite you to our in-person service that is going to be held at Cornerstone Hall, that's number 6 Tashier Street in St. Albert, and we would love to have have you join us for that service. Our doors open at 1045 and our service starts at 11 a.m. Well, let's start off our time together with uh, Rock of Ages. There is no rock, there is no God like our God. No other name worthy of all our praise. The rock is salvation that cannot be moved. He's proven himself to be faithful and true. There is no rock, there is no God like God. There is no rock, there is no God like our God. No other name worthy of all our praise. The rock is salvation that cannot be moved. He's proven himself to be faithful and true. is so wonderful to know. And that's why we can take and say, this is the day. I'm casting my cares aside, leaving my past behind, setting my heart and mind on you, Jesus. I'm reaching my hands to yours, but leaving there's so much more. Leaving my doubts behind, giving my hopes and dreams to you, Jesus. Reaching my hands to yours, believing there's so much more.
daughter And all my days I will live for you Today is the day you have made I will rejoice and be glad in it Today is the day you have made I will rejoice and be glad Today is the day, today is the day, today is the day. Well, that is a great way to start off, of course, our subject today. We are in the upper room with Jesus. Now, he's been talking about the Holy Spirit, but now he comes back to a very serious subject. So, Father, we thank you today occasionally in the Word of God, we look at some very serious subjects, and this is one of them. Jesus was preparing his disciples for some very turbulent times in later life. Now we ask your blessing about what he has to say here in John chapter 16, verses one to four, and we ask it all now in Jesus' name. So Jesus had already warned them that there was gonna be some persecution coming their way, and even some of them may lose their lives. He says, all this I have told you so that you would not go astray. He was concerned. He is concerned that people may give up when things get too tough, and that has happened. I remember when I first was in my first pastorate, and I had the privilege of winning a lady to the Lord. Now, it all happened because a 12-year-old niece was living in her home, and this niece was a very fine young lady, and uh, this um, aunt said, I have seen something very special in this girl. So. She invited me over, I, invite, I, I gave her an invitation to Christ. She gave her life to Jesus Christ. Then about two months later, she called me and she says, I am no longer going to be a Christian. And I said, why is that? She said, because all my friends have abandoned me. I talk to them about the Lord and they don't want to talk to me about it. I tried to chat with her about not doing that, but you know what? She decided to go back into the world. There are people that do that because it isn't easy to follow Jesus Christ. So Jesus was again giving this wonderful dissertation to his disciples so that they would not go astray or neglect so easily and so wonderful a salvation that we have, as the writer of Hebrews says, especially as the day is approaching. He says, some of you will put you out of the synagogue. In fact, a time is coming when anyone who kills you will actually think that they're doing a service to God. Now, that was, of course, the testimony of the Apostle Paul. When before Paul became who he was, he was a man from Tarsus, and he was a follower of Gamaliel, and probably the most zealous and also as well most um, personable individual in the Jewish faith. In fact, we know that he held the cloaks of those who um, stoned C Stephen. Scholars tell us that was actually him supervising the stoning of Stephen. And then we have him as well uttering threats to the people of Jerusalem. And then he gets special letters to be able to authorize him to go to the city of Damascus and do the same thing that he was doing in, of course, Jerusalem and the area of Judea. And so as he was on his way, that's when he had his experience with the Lord Jesus Christ. But up to that point, Saul thought that he was doing the will of God. Now, we do know that he regretted that decision and his earlier life because of the fact that he found that where he was going was wrong and what he was doing was wrong. So simply this, he um, 
Paul is, or I should say, Jesus is warning his disciples about the fact that some of them may lose their life. In reality, every one of them lost their lives except the apostle John. Each one of the apostles would be martyred. But Jesus was basically saying that those who are, you know, doing these things actually think that they're doing the will of God. And in many countries today, especially Muslim countries, those who persecute the church, those who uh, kill Christians actually think that they're doing the will of Allah or the will of God. And that is unfortunate. But Jesus had warned the Christian, um, the apostles, and also gives us a warning as well that these things could happen. I have a friend, his name is Greg Musselman. And Greg Musselman is, of course, a Canadian representative for the Voice of the Martyrs, which is a organization that keeps tabs on what's going on in the persecuted church. And all around the world right now, there are Christians who are being persecuted and losing their lives for the faith. This is a reality. And so Jesus is simply warning his disciples that this is a possibility. And then he says, they do such things because they have not known the Father or me. So Jesus makes it very clear that those who are doing these things don't know about the Father or know the Father. They may know about the Father, but they don't know the Father and they don't know Jesus Christ. They're only doing what they believe they're supposed to do. And also as well, they're doing the will of the enemy who is the ruler of this world. And that's a very unfortunate um, indictment against them. They, I have told you this so that when the time comes, you'll remember that I warned you. Now, this is a very important point. He says, I warned you ahead of time. You knew that this was coming. Sometimes we get warning signs that certain things are about to happen. Now, that means that we should not ignore them, but also don't be surprised if something bad happens to us. The book of Job is a perfect example of a righteous man being, of course, smited by the enemy and suffering a reverse. But remember, that is not the end of our story. Even if we lose our lives for Jesus Christ, all it is is a promotion. And Jesus was just warning his disciples and us as well that bad things can happen. But we need to know where the source is. It's not God. It is those who are agents of the enemy or the enemy himself. So then he says, I warned you. He said, I did not tell you this first because I was with you. So this is an interesting fact. As long as Jesus was with his disciples, there was a divine protection over them. Nothing could happen to them because Jesus was with them. Now, this does have an application to us today. That means that there is protection for the people of God. And that is such a wonderful thing to know. No, now the Bible does say the angel of the Lord camps around them that fear him. And so we should be aware not only of what is might happen and may happen, but also we need to know that there's divine protection and divine help. And that is, of course, a wonderful place to go when we find ourselves in that situation. We stand upon the word of God and we ask the Lord to help us either to rescue us or to give us the strength to go through what we have to go through. Because sometimes God doesn't rescue us. Sometimes we find ourselves in the fiery furnace. Sometimes we find ourselves in the storms of life. Sometimes we find ourselves with our back against the wall and the only escape is through the uh, Red Sea. Either way, God will be with us or God will help us to escape, depending on what his plan and purpose is for our lives. But that's where we need to submit our lives to the Lord and say, Lord, wherever you lead, whatever you do, Lord, I'm prepared and I'm willing to go with you. 
Like the old song says, I will go where you want me to go. I will say what you want me to say. I will be what you want me to be because I trust in thee. So Father, thank you today for these few words of encouragement and warning as well. Lord, help us in those times where, Lord, we don't know what's going on and we need your guidance. Lord, you made a promise in Proverbs 3, 5, and 6 that if we trust the Lord with all our hearts, we do not lean to our own understanding, but in all ways acknowledge you, you will direct our path. This is a wonderful promise. And so we ask your blessing now in Jesus' name, amen. Well, of course, it's that time where we pray for you and we have two wonderful scriptures to give you today. Philippians chapter four, verse number 19 says that the Lord will supply every need according to his riches and glory. That means that the Lord is Jehovah Jireh and he's ready to provide. Secondly, we have 2 Peter 3, uh, 2 Peter 2.24, that says simply this, that he is the Lord that healeth us. That is, of course, a re-emphasis of Isaiah 53, verse number five, that says basically the same thing. So Lord, today, whether it is provision or healing, direction or guidance, we are asking, Lord, today that you will meet every single need. Thank you for your provision. Thank you for your healing. Thank you for your direction. Thank you, Lord, that you meet us wherever we need to be met. And Lord, we're asking because James 4, 2 says, you have not because you ask not. So Lord, we're asking and we're thanking you for it now. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Well, I wanna close my time with you with the Revelation song. And I love this song because it just reminds us about the fact that God is, of course, our source in all things and in all ways. Worthy is the Lamb who was slain.
such a marvelous mystery, oh yeah. Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty. That, of course, is a wonderful little glimpse and snapshot, vignette into the future. So, Father, we thank you today for the time that we spent together, the Word of God that has been presented, and also as well, Lord, the songs that we sung, and as well, Lord, our prayer time. Now we ask your blessing upon each one in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, again, I want to invite you to our in-person service, which is going to be held at Cornerstone Hall. That's number 6 Tache Street in St. Albert. Our doors open at 1045. Our service starts at 11 a.m. And we would love to have you join us for our service. Thank you so much. God bless you and have yourself a great Sunday.